Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. The EMAD medium-range liquid propellant ballistic missile, developed in the early 2010s, is believed to have entered operational service around 2014. Essentially, it is a significantly improved variant of the Goddard F, with notable design changes. The most significant being the addition of an endo-atmospheric maneuverable re-entry vehicle, MARV. The fuel mixture remains the same as in the Goddard F, using UDMH fuel and N2O4 oxidizer, which retains the same temperature limitations of not above around 20 degrees Celsius, making the missile ideal for operation from hardened, cool, underground missile bases. The missile can be launched from mobile launchers just outside the tunnel entrance for quick deployment, or from Iran's unique launch pit and barrage launch concept. This concept involves a deep, undrow ground tunnel system, built into the hard rock of a mountain with a rail system that uses automatic launch wagons. Five EMADs are placed on each rail wagon launch system and driven to a highly hardened and shield cavern opening, allowing launches from a highly protected position, making the launch sites immune to most conventional weaponry targeting them. The EMAD's booster stage closely resembles that of the Gajer F, but a visible difference is the placement of the retro rocket boosters for thrust termination, velocity trim, and warhead separation. These are now located at the rear, near the motor, to avoid interference with the MAR-V and its fins. The EMAD follows a conventional minimum energy trajectory with a direct ballistic descent of the maneuverable re-entry vehicle, which re-enters at around Mach 11 necessitating the MAR-V avionics to endure high g-forces during the deceleration which occurs. It is believed that the MARV uses a rather simple, MMS-based inertial measurement unit, while the missile itself is guided by a dynamically tuned gyroscope-based inertial measurement system during the boost phase. This allows the MARV to correct for wind influences and so vastly improve targeting accuracy. Although the EMAD may not have evasive maneuvering capabilities, it is a high-precision missile designed for point strikes against adversaries with limited ballistic missile defense capabilities, or whose defenses have been degraded by other, more advanced missiles. The EMAD boasts a destructive power which is among the highest of Iranian missiles, carrying nearly a one-ton warhead over a range of 1,750 kilometers. By the early 2020s, a second variant of the EMAD appeared, featuring a smaller maneuverable re-entry vehicle of about 750 kilograms weight, extending its range to about 2,000 kilometers. The EMAD has replaced the Goddard family since the mid-2010s, indicating its production volume is quite high, given the vast production infrastructure of the Goddard. These missiles are attractive to Iran because they can be stored in an unfueled state, securely for decades, with minimal maintenance, reducing the risk of leakage and explosions. While Iran's solid fuel missiles are more compact and possibly more affordable initially, if the complete life cycle is considered, the EMAD may still be comparatively cost efficient. The ongoing production of EMAD missiles is maintained because they can effectively target and destroy well hardened structures across the region, often beyond the reach of conventional adversary air power to disrupt operations. The heavy direct descent MARV possesses high kinetic energy upon impact, increasing its impact penetration performance. The EMAD was notably used for the first time during Operation True Promise in April 2024 to strike Israel. At the time of EMAD's development around 2010, Israel had not yet deployed the Exo-Atmospheric Aero-3 Ballistic Missile Defense System. To overcome Israeli missile defense systems like Aero-2 and Patriot, the EMAD may well have incorporated simple periodic evasive maneuvers upon re-entering the atmosphere. While not as effective as more complex pseudo-random maneuvers over a large portion of the terminal trajectory, such small evasive maneuvers can decrease the hit probability. With the Aero 3 system now operational, EMAD's task of penetrating Israeli defenses has become more challenging. Iran employs inflatable decoys for missiles with Marvi and aerodynamic fins, which are only effective in vacuum, making them ideal candidates for EMAD's lightweight decoy solution. It is believed that the EMAD deploys several such inflatable decoys and chaff and or aerosols during mid-course phase and just before re-entering the atmosphere. This technique is used to confuse missile defense sensors and counter exo-atmospheric systems like the Aero-3. 
During the April 2024 strikes, some Israeli Aero 3 or US SM-3 interceptors might have been deceived to targeted such decoys, if there was difficulty in distinguishing between decoys and real MARV. The high-end radars like the AN-TPY-2, deployed by the United States and Israel, are essential for effective discrimination in such situations, where decoys are used extensively. Israeli claims that only nine unitary warheads hit its territory could indicate that Aero 3 interceptors were effective against the EMOD, but it's neither known how many EMODs were launched, nor how many Aero 3 were used to intercept them. The empty spent boosters of the EMADs launched against Israel are often interpreted as intercepted missiles. Damage of the Harmus objects indicates that some were erroneously classified as targets by Israel's missile defense sensor. Hence, the separated boosters have likely a beneficial decoy effect for the EMAD. In summary, despite its large size and origins in the Soviet R-17 Scud missile, the EMAD remains an attractive product for Iran's IRGC Aerospace Force. This is mainly due to the Soviet Scud's emphasis on producibility, resulting in a relatively simple and cost-effective design. Although the EMAD might eventually be replaced by the more advanced and expensive Khorramshahr family, based on the R-27 submarine-launched ballistic missile, it remains in production as of 2024, similar to the continued production of AK-47 variants worldwide. Compared to its long-term replacement, the Khorramshahr, its payload capacity is around half of it, but also costs significantly less. For Iran, whose ballistic missiles are equipped with conventional warheads and must meet cost-effectiveness criteria, the key factors are warhead weight, range, system cost, and overall life cycle costs. Within this doctrinal constraints, the EMAD performs quite well, and its vast stocks mean that it will continue to play a prominent role inside the IRGC Aerospace Missile Force structure. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.